and I want to welcome everybody today. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. And I say that because we have representatives and attendees on from both hemispheres, all continents, and we're at over 12 to 15 countries right now. So we want to welcome you to the I'm for Fun podcast. It's going to be uh, an exciting uh, broadcast podcast today, uh, and you will see why when I introduce our guest. Uh, before I do that, I'd like to just cover a few hot topics that are out there this week and um, are important to our industry. First and foremost is uh, we're all very disappointed uh, this week that we're missing IAPA, our first uh, cancellation of our trade and exhibition show in over 102 years. As uh, those of you who are attending today know, there were over 42,000 people in attendance last year. And I believe it was uh, over 120 plus countries that, uh, that joined us last year. So it was uh, records uh, in every sense of the word. So uh, we're looking forward to next year and getting back together uh, because we all miss it so much. Uh, I wanna thank all the people who have sent in their photos and comments and memories from the past IAPAs to, uh, so that we could post them in what we're calling Let's Celebrate IAPA this year. Uh, and it's been wonderful to see all of the faces and hear <clears throat> how people uh, feel about missing it. So next year for sure, uh, let's get back. Number two, the European park closures. Uh, the government officials uh, in throughout Europe ordered theme parks to close last week. England, France, Germany, Italy, Belgium, Austria, the ne Netherlands uh, as, a, as part of a string of national lockdowns amid the really the continent-wide uh, spike in COVID-19 uh, cases. So uh, there have been a lot of hospitalizations. This is happening around the world. Uh, it's not germane to Europe, it's, it's everywhere. Although on a, on a positive note, we're seeing that in Asia, things are popping back a little bit and people are going to parks and they are getting out and hitting the restaurants. And, uh, and so hopefully that will continue to cycle around this uh, world behind me. Number three, uh, California. As we've said every week, California beats to a different drum and uh, <clears throat> the governor, uh, he moved this week uh, to elevate California in 94% of California, incidentally, into the purple tier, the highest tier. So what that means is uh, it's the most restrictive tier and uh, the parks will basically, that we know, Disney, Universal, SeaWorld, Magic Mountain, uh, Knott's Berry Farm, uh, they're probably uh, not gonna open for the remainder of this year. And uh, they're questioning what time of the year they'll be able to uh, get into operation for 2021. Uh, it's, these, these closures have had an enormous economic impact on California. Uh, let's see, I think uh, the Southern California economy's already lost, because of the park closures, three plus billion dollars. It's cost another, it's going to cost an estimated another two billion dollars uh, through March of 2021. Uh, 10,000 jobs have been lost at Disneyland and their supporting facilities. Uh, the Disneyland Resort has lost an estimated 2.2 billion in revenue during this uh, 246 day, 246 day closure of the Disney Anaheim parks. So you amplify that with Knott's Berry Farm, with Magic Mountain, with SeaWorld and Universal Studios. And uh, to say it's uh, catastrophic would be an understatement. Uh, we've got to get this thing moving in the right direction. Uh, next topic is uh, just quickly the election in the USA. It's still being contested by the Trump uh, uh, organization. And um, it looks like clearly that Joe Biden will uh, become our next president of the United States. 
uh, in January. And uh, they're trying to work out transitioning, uh, but it isn't going smoothly at this time. Uh, we continue to watch the circus every day on our newscast, and uh, it is a circus. The last thing I want to talk about in Hot Topics is really good news. And there was more good news this morning. The vaccine. The vaccine. There's been amazing progress on the vaccine developments in the U.S. Um, Pfizer has now elevated the success of their vaccine this morning to 95%. And it looks like it's possible that we could see some of that coming out in December. Uh, Moderna uh, is at 94%. And uh, that's, a, that's an amazing achievement too in this short period of time. And in, in Germany, uh, the biotech company uh, CureVac has also developed a vaccine that they've announced. And uh, it, that'll be coming out and is, has had very successful tests. So, uh, more on uh, that company in a few moments, uh, and we'll hear about the situation in Germany uh, from from our guest. I want to um, I want to do a quick introduction of our topic and of Roland Mock, our our guest today. Our focus on today's podcast is really the European attractions market and how they're faring. Uh, and the steps that have been taken to address the 2020 challenges and how they uh, are addressing recent closures. And uh, there's nobody uh, I can think of better to address this than Herr Roland Mach, uh, my special guest today. A uh, little bit of background, the Mach family has been an important and enduring amusement supplier dating back to 1870, when they began building carriages and stagecoaches, uh, and then leading into the uh, 1880, when they began building organ wagons and caravans for the traveling carnivals and showmen. So uh, over 240 years of, of uh, involvement in our industry, and what an amazing fa uh, family the Mock family has been and continues. Uh, Roland is founder of Europa Park in Rust, Germany. He founded the park uh, back around 1975 with his father, Franz. And today, this beautiful park is Germany's largest theme park and the second most popular park in Europe. It's been voted the best uh, in the world for six years in a row by the Golden Ticket Awards, and we understand why. And Roland, a little uh, background, as many of you know, is a former chairman of IAPA. And for many years, IAPA was an international association in name only. Uh, but later it truly became a global organization when families like the Mock family became involved and uh, helped guide uh, the industry. And uh, they helped eradicate that xenophobia that we had here in America. Roland's uh, co-owner of Mock Rides, one of our industry's finest suppliers of rides and attractions. Many of our listeners, I can, I can tell, own and operate some. So uh, that's good. So, guten Tag, Herr Mock. Ich mag dich Sie willkommen. Ich bin unter einen Danken for today. So uh, our attendees are excited, Roland, uh, as I am to hear from you today on a lot of different topics uh, relevant to our business uh, from both the supply side and the operating side. You're very unique in, in this industry. So with that, I'm going to say hello, Roland, again, and introduce you. And please take a little bit of time and, and uh, tell us about you and the family and what's going on. Thank you, Dennis, for this wonderful introduction and uh, for awarding me so heavily. And uh, I'm, as you said, I'm for the global industry. I was really a bridge builder uh, when IAPA was uh, becoming much more international. And uh, I think I did a lot for the idea of IAPA, especially in Europe, in Germany, and in countries a long way away from America. Uh, I was born in Freiburg, which is a, the capital of the Black Forest, close to my company, where my grand-grand-grandparents started in 1780, as you said, and uh, 
I was growing up uh, right inside of uh, building up the ride. So uh, it was always my life being close to this industry and being close to construction rides and so on. And now grown up close to carousels, portable rides, caravans, coasters and all that. And uh, after school, I went to Karlsruhe. I had been educated as a mechanical engineer. And when I uh, finished my studying, I was joining the company because the idea came up not only to run the company, uh, which is constructing rides for the parks worldwide, but also uh, to open our new baby Europa Park in, as you said, 75. And uh, that's how it came that I was so close to everybody who was visiting me from abroad, from America, from China, from Asia, from Australia, from Europe, all over the world. They wanted to see what's going on in Roost. Uh, it's also a showcase for muck rides, for the products we are building. And uh, everybody who is making up his mind, he could test it before he's going to order maybe a quite expensive uh, investment. Uh, I think that's very helpful in selling. So uh, we have been creating a lot of prototypes uh, by building this Europa Park. And I must say, I love this business. I couldn't imagine what I've can done differently. Uh, it's the greatest industry you can be in, but it's in the time, in the moment, it's one of the hardest industries because uh, we are heavily attached by this uh, virus uh, worldwide. And uh, I'm so glad that we can exchange our, our experience, not only in good times, but also in difficult times. And that's what's happened every day, being on the phone with my colleagues uh, in France, in Netherlands, in uh, Italy, in Spain, in Scandinavia, in England. And uh, I have a lot of friends in the industry which give us all the best recommendations how you can solve this problem. But now well, I would like to in invite you with a small clip okay. to make you all love a little bit and uh, looking into an optimistic future. Uh, I think we can talk about what's going on about the crisis, that's clear, but we also should talk uh, where we are going to, where we are heading to. I think we need some optimism in the moment everybody around the world. And that's uh, why I think they're joining such a lot in this moment. I'm so happy. Thank you for joining me. And uh, as you know, I all, I like you all. And uh, I'm love. I like people. I like to exchange opinions. I like to exchange experience. And so let's start with a small clip. Danke. Talk German. <laughs>
host business people, we may not host tourist uh, people. That's really sad. So you could come. You, there is always a bed open for you. Oh, Dr. Shane, <laughs> roll it. Well, look, we've. Uh, we, uh, <laughs> thank you very much. That's that, that's fantastic. Ah, oh, oh, thank you, Sambo. Thank you. <laughs> he's he's giving you a menu. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Roland. Uh, well, we got a lot to cover today, and we got a lot of questions already rolling in. So I'm going to start. I guess the first question that I have for you, Roland, if you could give us a, an answer is, you know, how are things in Europa Park in Germany? And uh, uh, since the pandemic started, and we know that you finally got to open Europa, uh, Rolandica, and, uh, and then you've had to shut back down. And like to hear your thoughts on uh, how this is impacting and what you see uh, the pathway uh, in the short and long term. I think I was very heavily prepared because, uh, as you know, we have a very good relationship uh, to China's uh, business people, Chinese park people, to Mr. Su especially. And I was calling Mr. Su, asking him what's going on in China. Yeah, We didn't think uh, this will ever happen in Germany or in Europe or in America, but uh, I've seen the situation in China for uh, Disneyland Shanghai closed down. And so I gave him a call and he said, you have to prepare for three month clothing. If it will happen in Germany, you're going to be closed at least for 90 days. So I was prepared by that. I started to make up a crisis management and we were sitting together and making up our idea. What can we do? How can we plan the short future. Rulantica was only open for three months. It was running. Uh, but by a sudden, the mayor of Bruce came around the corner and shut down the water park, which was yeah. a shame because we are working on this project for many years, as you know, and was finally opened successfully and uh, on time. And now we had to shut down. And it showed up that we are going to have uh, not to open Europa Park. All the flowers had been set. I was walking with my wife on Easter Sunday. I remember it was like 25 degrees centigrade. It was uh, sunshine and there was nobody in the park, just birds, nice looking flowers. So this was a tough, tough time. I've never ever experienced something like that. Then we started with our crisis management to organize uh, First step uh, to get rid of two and a half thousand people who have been prepared uh, to run this park in this season. So we supported our staff. Uh, they are paid in Germany. It's different than in America. The government is going to pay them 60% of their income, but it's prepaid by the workers and by the company. And we how, added a Roland for how long is that paid? Yeah, it was taken up to uh, end of 20, but uh, when they've seen that um, the, uh, the virus is not going to finish and the time is getting even harder, they uh, announced it for end of 21. But we added 20% on top of this salary to support our staff. Then we wow. were looking to the costs. We were looking, what can we save? What can we save in energy costs? What can we save in investment? We stopped about 40 million euros investment that time. Then we were looking around us. We helped the hospitals because we had 10,000 chocolate, uh, chocolate um, <laughs> Easter bunnies in house. And I delivered them to the hospitals uh, for the people who worked there. They had a hard time already. France was heavily... Uh, heavily involved in the virus in that time. And our artists did outside work in front of uh, outside retirement uh, homes to give those people some distraction from this difficult situation. Uh, we kept also very close relationship to our personnel mm -hmm. and with our fans. We produced uh, with our film team a so-called weekly, where we showed the fans what's going on in the park, what's about the lockdown. And I think the personal communication towards staff and fans was very helpful. We got so beautiful letters, not only from our staff, but also from our fans. 
and we kept them in mind. Roland, um, how many employees does the does Mock employ uh, through the the parks and the resort? In the main season, about five thousand. Uh, but for the start of the season, we had to we had to shut down with two and a half thousand people. Uh, Mock is not involved uh, in this uh, because the production side, as in all over the world, mm. is still in operation. So Mock was not in the first step uh, covered by this uh, difficult situation. Yeah. So we had to shut down the whole business. We had to shut down the water park. We had to shut down Europa Park. We had to shut down the hotels. Uh, we had to shut down uh, the... Um, restaurant business, our event business, everything was closed down. And then we started to build up hygiene, hygiene plans. Uh, we were talking to political people. We were talking to the bands. We were talking to medical people. And I think the exchange with all other parks in Europe, big parks, and the exchange also with the German Association was very helpful. We, we put up the face marks uh, we put in disinfec disinfection uh, uh, points in the park, corona cops that control the distance and use of face marks uh, we invented, the limitation of visitors we had to put up. Uh, we had been in, in discussion with the government and they allowed us to put in, to start with 15,000 people if there is a restart. And we finally ended up uh, at 20,000 people a day and the same time in the water park we could allow 1500 people to get in then what we did is uh, the online ticketing which was already in in house but uh, mm -hmm. now we had to sell every ticket online and i was very scared if our people would accept that and what i felt in the very beginning we could have sold every day between 15 and 20000 uh, tickets. We also invented and used the time in the closing to create the virtual queuing, which helped us very much in, uh, for, especially as a, a, a gimmick for our hotel guests. They used it very heavily, and I think that's something which could stand forever. We were creating a distance radar app. It shows you on your iPhone or on your uh, computer mm -hmm. how far you are away from others in the park. If And it shows you it's like a game. At the end of the park visit, you had been good or you had you have to behave yourself a little better. Because Is that something that your team created? Yep. That, yep. that app? Yep. Wow. Yep. Excellent. That shows you that to stay away, if it's red, you have to behave yourself a little better and you have to pay attention not coming too close uh, to others. Uh, we received great credits uh, from the government because we had been very open with everybody, with all the competitors, because I said, we are all in the same boat. If we want to create opening for our parks, we have to work together in this moment. We have to forget about, uh, about um, uh, fighting about the guests uh, now we have to exchange experience to be one big unit and to be open all over the country which happened then on the 29th of may we could open europa park and on the 10th of june we could finally open uh, the second time our work uh, our walker water park and what is very interesting because of the online ticket we can see that over two and a half million visits, not one or I would say two, three people said, I've been, when we, when we called the information, uh, I had corona, uh, he had to say, where have you been the last 10 days? And there's yeah. five out of more than two and a half people said, I've been in Europa Park, but you don't know if they called it in Europa Park, but uh, this is only such a minimum uh, percentage of our visits. So uh, we are not a hotspot. We are not a driver of COVID. And I think that's a very interesting and very helpful information to the political people who have to allow if we can go, uh, can go back to business or not. And you we know, Roland, let me, let me add something there too. 
That's exactly the same in the United States. What we're finding here at the parks that have been able to open with the exception of California, there haven't been any reported COVID cases emanate from the theme parks. So we always say that a theme park, whether you're in Germany or France or Orlando, they're one of the safest places you can be on the planet from general safety. Well, that now applies to COVID as well. And the reason is because of people like you and your team implementing, establishing and implementing those practices that people adhere to and follow. I absolutely agree what you say, uh, Dennis. Uh, and we got so many letters that we are doing our job so perfect uh, with uh, with everything we did and how we handle the people that we were looking on spaces, on hygiene, on everything. But finally, it did, we did not succeed because uh, we would like to stay open in uh, November, first mm -hmm. time in the 45th uh, history, uh, year of history of Europa Park, and we couldn't open, or we had to close the second time, uh, Water Park and Europa Park and all the hotels at the end of October, and it hurts enormously because uh, with we had a good season in the hotel, which we were talking about that, Dennis, uh, is a little bit different than, Amer than uh, to mm -hmm. America, I've heard. Your visits in King's Island, Cincinnati, did show that uh, weekends on summer holidays was not really strong. And uh, we had over 92% occupancy in our hotel. So the people had, had been so happy to visit the park and to come with their kids and have a nice day out, which I'm not really sure uh, a big difference to America, as you mm. said. I don't, I wonder what what's the reason uh, for that. Well, so, some of our research showed that people, uh, it applied also to the restaurant business in America. People just weren't ready to come back. Cedar Fair, uh, Six Flags, SeaWorld, uh, even Disney. When they did open the gates and they, they were ready to accept, uh, the numbers were lower than anticipated. And those, those numbers have been borne out in their quarterly reports that they've just been putting out over the last few weeks. So I would say that uh, people just weren't ready, Roland. But it was different in, uh, in Germany. It was different yeah. in Europe. I got good remarks, uh, but I have to say there is a different way what they're going to do in, in Sweden. But in Sweden, they're much more open. They need not to take uh, masks. And uh, the, the restaurants had been open. Nothing had been closed. Uh, not the schools, nothing at all. But the parks are closed. Uh, that's a big difference in Sweden to what we have yeah. in Central Europe. Uh, yeah, so Lisa Berg and Groenland, they haven't opened at all. They're like California. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Roland, we're getting, uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to, we're getting some questions coming in and I'm, I'm gonna give them to you in a couple of parts and you can answer. One is, uh, this is from Peter, uh, he's in Europe. He says, uh, Herr Mach, uh, what capital plans and expansions did Europa Park have to either put on hold or cancel or delay? And what has been your experience from the ride manufacturer side uh, from customers? Are, are you seeing the same thing from them? As I said, we canceled about uh, investments of 40 million euros uh, right away to, to make sure uh, that we are going to survive the next uh, months because we didn't know in the very beginning how long we are going to be closed. When we heard that we can open, we reopened uh, our investment budget again, and we kept going uh, to make rides ready. As you know, we opened the Pirates ride, uh, which was burned down yeah. completely last year. Yeah. Yeah. And we tried to finalize that. We had been a little late in planning because we stopped that also because some companies couldn't work with the animatronics from America, Ghana Halls didn't show up because of transportation problems and also production problems in uh, California. So we had to delay this um, ride for two, three weeks. But finally, we opened end of July. And when we saw, and then there was a big optimism in the, in the company because we thought now we have reduction 
in number of visits, but we we can run both businesses. The water park was doing perfect. Uh, Europa Park was on a lower level doing good. We couldn't open the shows, so we had to reduce number of uh, artists. We had to reduce number of personnel. Anyhow, we went back to yeah. one shift to run it profitable, but we had had a big, big optimism that everything will come back to normal. And finally, we saw the numbers growing in the last six, eight weeks, but I couldn't believe because every political man was saying, even the chancellor, we don't want to have a second lockdown. So I believe to that. And we kept going. We kept going with everything because there will be an end of the pandemic in uh, in some months i i thought but now we are back to lockdown now we are back to another situation now we try to to keep uh, the money as strong as possible by delaying and stopping investments again second mm -hmm. time and uh, we're gonna prepare the the expansion of the water park because we are so far ahead with all the works uh, we are doing uh, an outside play structure, which will be the biggest one in uh, Europe. Uh, we work together with, uh, as you see on the picture, mm -hmm. with the um, mm -hmm. company in Canada. And uh, this is going to be ready in May. So we hope to come back to business, to normal business, uh, at least uh, beginning next season. The question is about muck rides. Yeah. Um, Macrides had a good situation that we had full that we had been fully booked. There had been some cancellation at Macrides, which hurt us heavily, but not for the year 20 and 21 for later uh, delivery. And we got uh, some work back uh, from China. From China, we got two big rides back in uh, to the production side, but I talked to Mats Vedin shortly after uh, a call with IAPA last week. And he thinks, and I agree, that we are going to have a hard time on the production side, maybe in 24, 25. Mm -hmm. but we still do planning for Europa Park uh, for a big ride. If, if there will be a hole, if there will be some problems in delivery and in, uh, in uh, finding uh, new uh, customers that we can fill out this hole, by a new roller coaster uh, for Europa Park. Roland, here's a tag on question to that uh, from Jim. It says, mm -hmm. Roland, the European countries seem similar to the individual US states <clears throat> where government support for the park seems different country to country. He said, with the significant support you described on the wage program in Germany, what is your outlook for other countries' parks whose governments don't provide as much support? So you've had, a, the question is, you've had a lot of support from Germany, the government, but what do you see happening from other countries who may not be supporting it like that? For example, talking to Rene Aziz uh, recently on a, one of our podcasts, he said, Mexico government has provided absolutely no support. It's hard also for big companies in Germany to be supported. Uh, if you're not an airline company like Lufthansa or a big, big player in tourism industry like TUI, who yeah. is the one of the biggest players worldwide, uh, they are subsidized by the, uh, by the government uh, very heavily. The Lufthansa received about 9 billion uh, euros uh, to survive, but uh, the government is part of the company now. And um, companies over 250 people who occupy more than 250 people are heavily, they, they, they try very hard to get uh, uh, help from the government. Uh, there was no big money coming in to us. The only thing is we can get rid of our personnel costs. That's true. Yeah. Uh, but we paid for that the last <laughs> years and also uh, my staff paid for that. And they um, they come down with the um, with the tax of entrance on the tax on the entrance fee and on food by about three uh, three percent. That really? helped very much uh, during the season uh, to to make uh, the season quite 
profitable there is now because of the second shutdown, a or an offer from the government that they will pay 75% of the turnover. You have 75 to 75% of the turnover. You have to compare November 19 to November 20. Mm. And out of and uh, for what you you made in 2019, uh, it's paid 75%, but it's a big, big uh, fight to to get this money and nobody really knows in Germany if it will finally come or if there are closures which may uh, uh, that it may happen that uh, they don't pay anything so it's tough they they came out with credits but the credits from the banks are much cheaper if you have doing good business with your bank uh, the credits of the banks are it's cheaper uh, if you work with your own bank uh, than the bank uh, which was shown up by the government. So it sounds like you've had great support. Here's another <clears throat> here's another question from Thomas and it says Roland this is out of Orlando. He said, "How are things changing in the European countries and the com European community as far as domestic travel, particularly with the impact airlines have had?" He said, how has this impacted the operation and are people going to be flying or driving in the future? Well, we can see I'm on the board of tourism uh, in Germany and uh, we had a, a meeting last week and uh, they had uh, inquiries putting out and uh, it shows that the tourism business is coming back quite soon after end of COVID. Uh, the international business will take about two, three years longer. So I think for parks, for regional parks, I think we have a we have a big, big chance uh, to to get good business for international uh, parks who have to receive their clientele by aircraft. Maybe yep. it's a little tougher, and uh, especially the tourism <coughs> industry in Europe is going to be very optimistic. I think 70% of the Europeans say they're going to travel by car, by car, not flying, uh, to other countries, to Germany, to Italy, to France, to Holland, to Scandinavia. And I think uh, this is a big chance for parks. And this was the first impression I have always had. And that made me so optimistic. I think our industry on the long run if we can survive financially, I think we have a great future. I could right. see it in the eyes when we reopened after two months. Uh, people were coming in, were <clears throat> laughing, were shaking their hands, were happy. It was really a great thing for the families to, to come out, to, to not to Happy to be home. back, right? <laughs> happy yeah, to be back. And they, okay, spent I money. they spent money. We didn't do any reduction. Uh, we had the best per cap ever. And there was no arguing about pricing, about uh, things. We didn't have shows in the beginning. We only started them six weeks later by 500 people a show. So they get less for the money and they paid more. We have no reduction. We had no bus uh, tourism. We had no groups. Mm -hmm. uh, we had big problems with our, uh, with our yearly, uh, with the yearly passport it was a big, big trouble because we sold about 100,000 uh, yearly passport and we had to deal with those um, people. They are good clients, they are good friends, but we couldn't let them in every day as they were used to because we would uh, overfill the park. So we had to find mm -hmm. a solution for them. That was a big, big uh, issue for us. Okay, here's we've got about 30 questions rolling in here for you. So. Okay, <laughs> I tried to be thought of. <clears throat> well, no, that's okay. What we'll do is, uh, for the ones we can't get to, we'll send them those to Lucas. He'll get those to you, and then you can uh, respond to those. We'll put them in our ITBS. Our next question comes from Helmut. Helmut, you may know some of these people. He said, Roland, which of the pandemic restrictions and safety protocols do you think will continue into 2021 and beyond? That's first part. And number two is, what types of programs or policies have changed during COVID? So this is part of that, that you you think will remain and uh, 
have an impact. So what what have you put in place and what do you think? It's like 911. We after 911, we don't travel and do things the same way we did. After COVID, what do you think is going to continue on in the future? I might I might ask uh, the first thing I think what will stay is the mask. I don't think we get rid of the mask very very soon. Uh, I think the people have to train to come closer together as they were used to. If I look to the Bavarian Oktoberfest, for example, yeah. all the big shows we, we were doing very successfully, I can't imagine that, that this will come back uh, very soon. We have to train the people that they are social people and that they like to, stay, to be together. Uh, I think uh, that will be uh, something which, which will stay. And I think Hygiene is also something which we have to look at uh, much more heavily than we did it before. I think that's something that people are used to clean their hands, uh, wash their hands, uh, using- Sanitizing, using, disinfecting. Yeah, using that. Um, I hope if we have a vaccine and uh, if the numbers are going down, I hope the people will also forget. Uh, I think people are, if it's changing to a positive side, I think people are optimistic and uh, they try to be back. And, and what is nice to, to see, we have conferences. It's, it's a great thing to talk to everybody now around the world by that. But I think we would like to meet. We would like to be in touch with each other, to, to have a conference on yeah. a table. Uh, because it's a different thing than talking to a television and talking uh, just on, on, yeah. on, uh, on Zoom. <laughs> We're all Zooming. Okay, here are a couple of more questions. Thank yeah. you. Good Your answers. Marks, come on. Uh, uh, Look. Scroll, scroll up there a little bit, Pam, to that. No, the other way. <laughs> Thank you. A um, German beer? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> German beer. <laughs> ah, Wait a minute. I'm to drink your tea. You're almost. Look. Wait here, yeah. look here. Yeah. There's the history yeah. with, his, with his water bucket. He has no beer. Yeah. <laughs> Donka, I need, would somebody get me a beer, please? <laughs> <laughs> I have iced tea. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. A uh, couple of more questions here. <clears throat> it says, uh, Herr Mach, what is your yes. instinct on a time frame for our industry to come back? This is kind of where you were going. Scroll up, please. People uh, talk about the new normal. Do you think that phrase is a real phrase? And if not, why? The new normal. Uh, so how you, you've talked about masks and some of the things, and I agree with you 100%. We're going to see that. But how long do you think it's going to come back, take to come back, Roland? We're, I think we're it entering all, it, 2021. I think it, it all depends to get rid of this fear. If you open the radio, if you open your television, if you open your iPhone, you can read COVID, 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 COVID. Every people minute. People dying, people are in hospital, people get sick. Uh, it's, there is no other issue anymore in our country. If this will change and somebody would talk about soccer games, about big parties, about Oktoberfest, about being together about weddings, about uh, birthday parties. I think the people, they can't wait for that. And, but they have to feel safe. They have to be sure that they are not infected anymore, that the risk is very small for them. And if they got this safety, I think the, the people will recover quite, quite fast. Great. It may be difficult for flying. It may be difficult for vacation. The first saying was, when I talk to people, they say, how beautiful is your country? How beautiful is Germany? How beautiful are the, uh, is the Black Forest, the Lake Bodensee, uh, the cities? Uh, the people now see that the country around their homes is also very nice. So this may cause a little bit a longer line to come back what we have been using or what we knew uh, many, many years before. Okay, two more questions. <laughs> I'll kind of roll them together. That's a very good answer and very, yeah, hold on. <laughs> See, it's, here it's only a quarter till 11. So we, we, we're not even at 12 o'clock. So I have to have uh, iced tea, <laughs> okay? Next question. <clears throat> it says, uh, this comes from Guy. 
He says, Roland, has there been significant impact to the, abil the availability of parts and materials to mock rides? Second part, have there been delays in shipping and installation? And what do you see in the near and short term? Big, big problems with installations. You can't believe what's going on if you have to send somebody to China to set up a ride. It's incredible. They have to stay in the current guarantee. They, they have to stay 14 days there and they get their food in the morning, in the afternoon and at night, not opening the doors, terrible. And uh, also transportation things to, to get things shipped from one place to the other was very, very difficult. Um, so that's not really fun if you want, if you are working abroad, if you're working outside yeah. to keep things going. Uh, this comes, the next part is uh, of a question. It's <laughs> kind of ties on to what you were talking about. This is from Frederick. He said, how is Mach dealing with payment issues as in non-payments, given that parks have been in tremendous cash burn situations with very little revenue streams for several months? How are you working with your uh your uh, operators? It's working still quite fine. We have not big payments not being uh, forwarded to us. So up, up to now, we are in quite a good shape, but it has to change now. We have to get open in the parks. We have to get uh, ready for making money in the parks. Uh, otherwise, uh, and that's what I said, what Mats told me uh, last week, and I agree absolutely to him that the, big, the difficult time may come uh, for the next two, three years for the production uh, side. Uh, it's, it's a little bit delayed to what we, what we uh, learn uh, with the park situation in the moment. So we know that uh, China and the Middle East have kept all the manufacturers, suppliers busy for the last 12, 13 years. Uh, China slowed down for a while. Some of those bigger projects we saw like Evergrande and some of the other ones. And uh, also uh, Middle East has not performed like they ever anticipated in their performance. So it says, are you looking, uh, are, you, are you able to fill the pipeline? <laughs> That's what we use. Are you able to fill the pipeline now? And how long before you can uh, readjust to that? We had, as I said, we have been in a very good position uh, to have full book, uh, fully booked uh, uh, contracts up mm -hmm. to 22, and that helps in the moment. But uh, we have to, uh, we have to achieve uh, new uh, orders, absolutely. But I think uh, if parks growing, uh, also uh, the regional parks, I think there is a chance to deliver to smaller attractions because they're going to show up with a much, much better season than they had maybe years before. So maybe the delivery situation will change, not only delivering to America, to China, abroad. Maybe we get a chance uh, within Europe uh, to fill up our books uh, in the future. But I'm really sorry about that, or I'm really, I have a lot of sorrows if it will come back uh, to what we had the years before because we had a great time, fully booked since 10 years. And uh, I think this will change a little bit. Next question. <clears throat> this is from Vilja. V Vilja. He says, we know some suppliers are working to leverage their services, such as offering off-season ma off maintenance uh, or something similar. It says, given the slowdown in purchasing a project, of products, is this something that Mock is doing? In other words, are you offering service to other parks to, who buy your product to help them and assist them with their labor cutbacks? We could do it, but uh, it's not really a business issue so far. Okay. Okay, it says, uh, next question is, how have the European suppliers or parks come together to support each other in the last couple of months. Now you addressed that a little bit in the beginning, but are you having special uh, meetings among the, uh, uh, what is the German association, the v VDU is it? 
BDFU. 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 Yeah. And how are they supporting the uh, the local operators throughout Germany? It's an it's an installation which is located in Berlin, mm. but I think uh, in this pandemic time, the uh, the big drivers are the big parks. Uh, in this situation, I think we can help much more than an association to everybody else. We talk to to smaller parks, we talk to our customers, and uh, I think we can do much more also in point of view of information, in helping, in, in, giving, in giving recommendation. And I think I'm in a personal very good situation because I know the side of the uh, construction uh, business and I do know the side of operation. Yeah. Uh, and I think I'm a really good partner in talking in this difficult time, but we all have worldwide. No question about that. <laughs> would I think everyone would agree 100% uh, that your your operation is very unique. Um, here's, here's a question. It says, what kind of new product, new technology, new experiences do you think people were, will be looking for? And it says, we know that you have Mock Next as your development incubator for ideas. And how is your family? How is Michael and Ann Catherine and Thomas and the rest of the family, how are they supporting and becoming involved? That's my question. <laughs> First of all, they they learn a lot for their life in the moment because the uh, situation on the 35th birthday of Europa Park mm. was never ever thought that it's going to be like we had it this year. And uh, I think we have been very happy that we save money also on the side to, to stay with this difficult situation financially, what we have in the moment. And I think they will learn so lot, so, so much for, for all their life. Uh, it's, it's the heaviest uh, situation after the Second World War, mm -hmm. what we have now. And uh, the good thing is there's nothing destroyed, but there is no money coming in. And uh, we, have to do, we have to delay people. Uh, we never did that before. Uh, so there are a lot of things to do what we are not used to do in the last uh, 45 years. <laughs> and um, I'm happy that they are prepared for this situation by, as I said, uh, on the computer side, on the online side, on the uh, yeah. side that we are going to produce the VR entertainment uh, industry, as you know. And yeah. we had the first experience, the first experience with the, the full body tracking, free roaming uh, VR experience. And I have yeah. a helmet here. It's brought in with a wonderful lady, as you know. Oh, yeah. So it's a little bit, as I said, optimistic look here. That's, uh, I like to see the helmet, but the lady also. <laughs> Would you um, allow her, Roland, could she sit down and you leave the screen, please? <laughs> Thank Beautiful. You so Thank you. Beautiful. We are doing books. We are doing films. Hold the helmet up. Hold that up just a moment. And we have this free, uh, yeah, this free roaming helmet, and the body is fully scanned and it's open already as a test, as a pilot product in Europa Park. And uh, yeah. we're gonna, we kind of, we may sell it to other locations, to other parks uh, worldwide. What is very unique is that we can use thirty-two people one time, and we can. Uh, scan them at one time and run the installation with 32 people. Same so time. They, all, they can all participate together at one time. Yep, exactly. Wow. And we do the films for that on, on in-house. And I think that's something which could be used also not only in Europa Park. And the second thing is that we have um, under construction and in preparation, a new type of restaurant that's done by Thomas and his team. Mm -hmm. uh, this is going to be a sensational uh, innovation in the food industry, and it also can be seen in Europa Park next year, hopefully. We are going to start the building uh, within the next two or three months, and this is something which can be rolled out also to theme parks, to cities, to to big towns worldwide, because it's a sensational event 
for in the food industry never seen before. Oh, that's wonderful. So we, we were checking the time to, or we, 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 are, we were using the time to do those events uh, when we had the lockdown here in the park with all the computer people and what we can work uh, on, on this issue. And I think this will help to have innovative products for the industry, but for everybody else worldwide. Well, that's what I've said in my podcast before. I've said we all are familiar with the term zero-based budgeting, but I think just exactly what you said, you've been doing zero-based planning and you haven't wasted any time with your staff. You've used this time during the downtime to create. Got another question here that I had. It says, we talked a little bit and we saw the picture of Rulantica and we know it was a large investment. It was at 200 million, I believe. And, yeah, with the and hotel. Uh, that's a big investment for anybody, no matter who you are. And uh, I guess the question is, no, first part, you talked a little bit about it, how it's been received, but we saw in the news, it was, it was extremely popular. I know you had um, one, of our, uh, one of our industry experts working with you closely the last few years. Little Chip. Chip, Little Chip. Cleary, Chip yeah. In Coney Island. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Chip Cleary. Island is, in, yeah, every, every, close uh, to New York. Uh, have a sparkling long, day. Long Island. Yeah. Long Island. Yeah, long close to Coney Island. Yeah, exactly. And Chip is, uh, I know he's uh, been a great support to you and uh, we're going to get him on here in a later podcast uh, to talk about some things, but uh, Rulantic, oh, if we're, we're close to time. So I'm going to ask you just to give us a real synopsis of Rulantica and how happy you are with that. It was a big project, not only because of uh, the time we were, uh, we were uh, using to, to get the permits and to get the right design. We wanted to start in an open air water park. Finally, we found that it's better for a yearly business and all the hotel business to stay open all year round. And we decided to go indoor, which was a very big, big thing to, because you can't expand it uh, from one second to the other. And I was so, so thankful that Chip uh, came in with a lot of good ideas with all his experience of running a sure. water park. And I think without the help of Chip, we couldn't uh, come up with such a great product. And it's such uh, big success by the people. They like it. And also in the time when we had to shut down and reopen, we did the budget. We had been over budget. And I think the idea to be a destination with a water park, also with some exp expansions, which are possible, as I said, the structure outside, and we opened a sauna just two, three weeks ago with a beautiful bar and rest resting area, uh, which is now shut down also. But What's the park capacity, Roland? What's the park capacity? We could have done uh, 5,000 a day over the period because we start in the morning, nine o'clock in the morning, and we only close at 10 o'clock. And yeah. with different price models, we are able uh, to, to handle 5,000 people because they come different times of the day. Same time, we had about two and a half to 3,000. That's a great, that's a great picture behind you. It looks like you're on one of the slides. Yeah. <laughs> Well, hours. Roland, this has been a this has been a very quick hour. I'm sure you would agree. We're we're actually at the end of our time here. Uh, I want to say from the response we've had from our subscribers today, our attendees, and from our uh, from our questions that are still coming in that we we haven't had a chance to get to. I want to invite you back at some uh, point in time after the first of the year, if you would come back as a guest again, because people want to hear what you have to say, uh, if you would be so inclined to do that. Uh, your organization is, uh, is, a, is a great organization. Your family is a wonderful family. I've known, I knew your father before, when you were a little boy, actually, we, you're, you're a little younger than I am. So uh, uh, I remember the family. Um, so I want to I want to thank you so much for coming on. I'm going to give you a moment. There's there's one more question that has come in, <laughs> which you have okay. to answer. Okay, you like this when it says <laughs> it says the Miss Germany pageant has been a staple of Europa Park for almost 20 years. It says 
How many Miss Germanys have you met? And how has this ongoing event helped the Europa Park organization? I met so many beautiful girls over the 20 years we are doing it. You but brought a lot been... of them to IAPA when you came in as chairman. <laughs> exactly, but there had been much more coming in also because they like Europa Park so much and the place and they would all come back even if they're not elected in uh, Europa Park. It helped because it's the biggest um, um, the biggest event in concern of press and uh, marketing for Europa Park. And uh, we have already set the stage and, and we still hope that we can do it in uh, February, the next election yeah. uh, for our people. And uh, I would like, like to thank you for listening to me, to all my friends worldwide. I would like to say to everybody a great hello from Europa Park with a little bit of my stuff behind me, Euromouse, our cook, our yeah. beautiful lady from the dinner show. Yes. And uh, I would like to say you one word. I think we, I said all the time, it's the most beautiful business we are working in. Even if we have a hard time, it's, I think it's still the most beautiful business we are in. We have to take some, some uh, power to, to come over the next weeks, months. And uh, if we are back in business, I think we will have so happy people and uh, kids who will, who will have their stars in the eyes. They will laugh. And I think we're going to be the happiest place on earth. So it makes sense to stay alive, to take the force, to stand over the next two or three months. And I would like to welcome you all here in Europa Park or on the show. May it be in China, may it be in America, may it be in Barcelona this year or next year. And hope to see you all again. Stay healthy. Thank you for this call. Thank you for the confidence. And and there is a sound being back. I greet you from Europa Park, Dennis. Thank you for the invitation. See you all back home and have a nice evening and Merry Christmas. Yeah, well, thank you. Duncan Shane, Roland, and thank you, Jeff, you're a, you're a mouse and beautiful girl. Yes. Uh, yeah, prost. Well, thanks so much. I wanna, in closing, I wanna say uh, something that I like to put out at the end of each podcast. Uh, the title of this is I'm for fun with Dennis Spiegel. And I've always said, if we don't have fun, how can we sell fun? Number one. And we we're not here for a long time. We're, we're here for a good time. And we, we really do work in this great industry, as you said, Roland, and we don't put smoke in the skies. We don't contaminate the rivers and streams. At the end of the day, what we really do is put smiles on people's faces and we make memories that last a lifetime. So Roland and team, thank you very much. Vita Zane, hopefully very soon. <laughs> Danke schön. Danke schön. <laughs> Greetings to America. Thank you. And around the world. <laughs> and around the world, absolutely. <laughs> okay. I want you to come back as a guest, okay? People want okay. you to come back after the first of the year. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody.